Hello and welcome to Sanducation hit number one. This is the genesis. This is the intro. I am going to introduce you to everything Sen, specifically Sen protocol. There's going to be a lot of information in this video, but it needs to be done. I do this video to communicate Sen to the Sen community and to new people interested because Sam protocol is the most exciting thing I've ever come across in my whole life. And I believe that if you listen to this, you're probably going to believe so as well. It's a very bold claim and I'm only half crazy half of the time, but still it's a very cool protocol. So I'm going to break this down in different parts. We're going to start off by talking about what is SAM protocol and why is SAM completely unique? Then we're going to go into who is behind SAM protocol. Who are the shadowy supercoders? Then we're going to talk about how you can participate. Also, when and where to do so. And then we're going to go into how it all works. We're going to dive straight into the light paper. We're going to look at the math gonna dissect the math into quarks and then I'm gonna present to you a use case so you can put all these puzzle pieces together into something real and realize how it all comes together in real world adoption which is what Sen is all about and how Sen is truly game-changing and we're gonna finish off with why Sen matters so there are timestamps below, so you can jump to whatever part is meaningful to you. This will be a long one. First little disclaimer, none of what I'm talking about here is financial, legal or tax advice of any kind. I'm not trying to pump my bags here. In fact, I don't own any Sen today at all. I want to give you an equal opportunity to do this with me, with us. And uh, in this way, we can truly all be Satoshi here. This is purely educational. I don't want your money. I don't want your email address. I will never DM you. Beware of scammers. There is risk involved with interacting with protocols, trading with cryptocurrencies. However, we really minimized it with this one. And you're going to understand exactly why soon. There are no promises being made. There should be no expectations. Even though SEM might become very valuable in the future, you should have no expectations of that. There's no promises being made. There's just a protocol made here. And all I'm going to do is tell you how you can interact with it. And before you do so, I want you to understand what it is and how it works. And I want to warn you a little bit uh, of words it is my intention to make you as a listener really understand what I'm talking about, but I'm going to use words and phrases and terms that will disencourage you and make you maybe confused. And this is okay. You don't have to understand all I say right away. You can easily participate in all of this anyway. It's easier than ever before. And uh, I also might express some personal views that that's uh, not necessarily represent uh, Fair Crypto Foundation. So, yeah, with that said, if you stay to the end, I uh, also might go on a little rant just for fun. You don't want to miss that. So, what is SEN? SEN is self custodial exchange of value. The SEN token is a value entity intended to be optimal for peer to peer exchange, thus, a medium of exchange. SEN aims to become a community building crypto asset that connects like minded people together. SEN is designed to become a universal cryptocurrency to achieve the original mission of blockchain, following the first principles thereof, such as decentralization, transparency, counterparty risk resistance, peer to peer value exchange, and self custody. SEN is designed to reach to reach mass market adoption with the lowest barrier to entry possible compared to any other digital asset out there today. SEN is a protocol built upon the ERC20 standard on the Ethereum blockchain. 
The same community fosters inclusivity and education for anyone interested. Send holders create a sustainable network through co trustless consensus of delayed gratification. So this is basically SEM if it were to be described and defined. And this is something you can refer back to. But let's take this a step further and make it more digestible, understandable. So we will do so by talking about the many features and the benefits uh, of what uh, makes uh, up SAM protocol. And in doing so, we can explain why SAM is truly unique. Um, and it is so because it's truly adopting the first principles of crypto. It is permissionless. Anyone, anywhere, anytime can interact with the protocol. All you need is an internet connection and access to a browser. It's transparent, all code is open source, you can go to GitHub and see it all. If you don't know code, you can incentivize the guy who installs the router to decrypt it for you. It's on-chain, it's immutable, it cannot be changed, it cannot be stopped by anyone, it's trustless. You don't have to trust me, you don't have to trust Jack, you can verify it for yourself. It's self-custodial, custody is something very important. We don't want your money. Your money is your money and should remain in your custody, period. So Sam offers free mint in perpetuity. So one good thing is that in order to get Sam, you don't need to give up any other kind of value, any other kind of coin or token. Therefore, it has the lowest barrier to entry possible into crypto. It's free. If it's free, then you can question, well, does it have any value? Well, it doesn't, but it will. So it also accelerates crypto adoption, which is something that is very needed. I think we can all agree on that. It will become very decentralized. It's designed to spread all over the world with fewer whales to influence the whole network. It will be transactional friendly. I don't want to use my Bitcoin to pay for stuff. I rather use my dollars. So decentralized peer to peer money is still up for grabs here. In our opinion, there's minimal amount of code that SAM protocol is built upon. Less is more. It's less than 400 lines to make up the whole protocol. So we really streamlined the code here. We have viral tokenomics. So adoption is built right into the protocol, into the formulas. And in a later section, we're actually going to go through this um, and explain exactly how those works. So it's very interesting. There's a yield optimization opportunity here also built into the protocol, which can be accessed very easily, very clearly. Sound protocol encourages long term thinking and investing. And this is crucial in a world where everything is designed for quick profit, short term thinking, short term acting. We trying to build something here with more soundness and sustainability. So there are also great staking rewards built into the protocol, which can easily be taken part of. And that makes your value fight world inflation. Now, an important aspect of SAM protocol is that it's built by the community and it's driven by the community. The same community is on fire and keep contributing to the protocol constantly. We iterated fast and collectively built a very fantastic protocol here. We also have a great founder. He is experienced, he has open source values, he's educational, and he's doxed. We're gonna talk more about him in this presentation. 
it's so easy to participate. You just have to connect, choose your time, mint and stay. All you need is a wallet and some gas. Now, these are some of the features or benefits of SAM protocol, but we also made a couple of design decisions in making this protocol and it's also important to discuss the things we intentionally left out, such as there's no counterparty risk. It's just you and the protocol. You don't have to trust some shady guy with three arrows. There's no initial supply. It starts with zero supply. There's no max cap on the supply. And for what we are trying to achieve here, this is actually a vital thing since we're going for wall adoption. You know, however, since there's no maximum cap. It's inflationary in the beginning to accelerate adoption. But despite having zero max supply, um, it's actually disinflationary as adoption increases. It's a very important factor to point out. There's no team allocation. There's no pre-mint. There are no venture capitalists to go in before you. There's no admin keys. There's no hidden doors. So what does all of this mean? Number one, it means you have an equal opportunity to participate. Not even, no one, not even Jack will have an edge on you here. And number two, it provides a certain certainty and predictability in let's say the governance, there are no rulers of the protocol. There's also no origin address. We've decided to remove all unnecessary uncertainty. There's no centralization. There's no party that's gonna own more than even 1% of the network that would influence the rest of the network. No centralized exchange. This is intended only to be on decentralized exchanges. So that means that a new adopter don't have to go that scary, fraudulent, complex, centralized exchange route in order to enter crypto. There's no hodling needed. Send is something you don't need to hodl. And what we mean with that is Technically, when you stake, the protocol actually burns your SEM, creates an IOU to your address, and when you then unstake, it remints them together with your API. There's no loss of uh, principle if you end your stake early. So you only lose your API, and we believe this encourages uh, liquidity. So looking at all of these points here, all these bullets, in the list um, and collectively I, I challenge you to find one other project that lives up to all of these first principles and features and benefits for each one of these bullets there's a three-hour discussion of why this is great and I'm not gonna go through all of that now just some of them but if you stay in the community, in the same community, you're gonna become ninja on all of them. This is an educational community that strives for mass adoption. So we want people to understand what we're doing. But let me summarize by saying this, these first principles that we're babbling about all the time, why do they matter? Why, why are they so great? They are great because we know better now. We've seen what works, we've seen what hasn't. So as, as much as they are great, they're also less risky. There are less points of failure. There's been great projects made in crypto, but they haven't applied first principles of crypto. So many of them have failed and many of them live under unnecessary uncertainties. Sen is the accumulative knowledge from thousands of years from trading with everything from seashells to fiat to crypto to DeFi. And when we ask ourselves, knowing what we know now, how would we do it? 
the answer is Sen. Sen has picked the raisins of the many cakes of everything from Bitcoin all the way to Hex and created something truly unique here, which just might work. And if it works, it's going to be huge. It's designed to be top. So we should ask ourselves, why wouldn't it work? So guys, we just talked about what Sam crypto, what Sam protocol is and why it's unique with applying these first principles of crypto with all its features and benefits. Now we're going to go to the section of who is behind Sam. And there we have three parts. It's Fair Crypto Foundation, Jack Levin and the Sam community. So you can go to faircrypto.org and this is an excerpt from uh, the site there. This is the um, the underlying ethos of blockchain has always been to shift the balance of the economic power away from centralized organizations through proliferation of the self-powered cryptographically secured digital self-ownership. Fair Crypto Foundation aims to empower the individual in navigating the evolving world of cryptocurrencies through understanding of the first principles of crypto. In our view, the first principles of crypto are self-custody, transparency, trust through consensus and permissionless value exchange without the counterparty risk as originally envisioned by Satoshi's white paper. So Bitcoin is arguably potentially a great store of value. Okay, many would agree on that, but it's not a great medium of exchange. It's just not. It intended to be, but it isn't. And it's also not the best tool for crypto adoption. And as long as that is the case, we are going to continue innovate to make crypto accessible, understandable, adoptable in a more fair way. There's been a widespread abuse of the first principles of crypto in the crypto space, which has had monumental negative consequences for the whole industry. It's pushed back adoption years. And then we haven't barely mentioned the problems with the legacy systems, which is why we're here in the first place. So this is the whole reason for the need to create a foundation like this. There is a need to take a step back and truly adopt these first principles. And in doing so, also spearheading the innovation with projects like Sam. And many more projects will follow. You can be sure of that. And hopefully we can inspire other projects to also adopt them. And more hopefully we can prove that it is a competitive advantage to also do so to the point that it becomes a necessity to adopt them. So this is Fair Crypto Foundation, and this is the whole ethos behind Sam Protocol. Now we're going to talk about Jack, Mr. Jack Levin. Who's this guy? So this guy has, let me just say, he, he's the main founder uh, of Fair Crypto Foundation, um, and he's used his network to, to really shape it. Um, I've helped a little bit. A lot of contributors have helped along the way, but Jack really deserves the main credit here. He, he has 30 years of open source experience. He was number 21 at Google. He's probably the only one in the world who crashed Google six times. <laughs> um, he's also founder of Image Shack, which is a cloud storage solution for for images um and it's i think it has two employees and still ranked 161 out of 2 billion websites today uh which is quite impressive he's also a true bitcoin og og he mined bitcoin at around one to three dollars back in 2011 if i'm not mistaken something like that so just looking at these references, and there are many more, you can tell that Jack Levin has extensive experience in open source, technology, scalability, and crypto. 
he's not interested in second. He wants great big things. And Jack Levin is a great asset for Sam. Sam protocol in the same community. People will listen to him based on his experience, expertise, and network. He's a great educator. He has promoted Sam extensively, Sam's Genesis, and will continue to do so. That's what he's going to do. I really like Jack. He's a good friend. And just being around him, I'm learning a lot. And the point here is you can too. He's there for and with the community basically every day. Now, I also personally trust Jack, but you shouldn't. <laughs> and that sounds funny, um, but let me explain. I'm trying to make a point here with this. There's absolutely no reason, in my opinion, why you shouldn't be able to trust Jack. <laughs> so, but there's no need for you to trust him, is what I'm trying to say. And I'm pointing this out because when you have a charismatic leader, and especially one that's obviously a lot smarter than you, I don't know who you are, but he's definitely a lot smarter than me. Maybe you're some kind of genius. It's very easy, however, to stop thinking critically and just take what someone like him says at face value. No bueno. Think critically of everything he says, and in doing so, you will learn. Question everything, ask why, research, and learn. That's number one. Number two, the bigger point to make here is that he doesn't matter fundamentally for some protocol. And what do I mean? Again, you don't have to trust him. It's all open source. It's all transparent. It's all code. There's no secrets. There's no hidden doors. There's no admin keys. He's not interested in your custody. Quite the opposite. He will promote that you have your own custody. Sam protocol is not dependent on Jack Levin. And this is a fundamental different difference from systems you might be accustomed to. So even though he's the best asset probably we can have, it's not dependent on him. And this is what we call trustless. Sam is a trustless system. You don't need to trust Jack. You don't need to trust anyone else. You can't also hold them accountable for your actions here. He hasn't made any promises. It's just you and the protocol. With that said, since I know the guy a little bit, let me also say this. What really motivates me personally in following him as a leader is why he is doing this. Even though he, he cracked the code here, potentially, of making this huge, he's not doing this to make money. I mean, I wouldn't exclude it from the calculation completely, but it, it's it's definitely not the driving force. He, he has money, probably more than he could ever spend for many lifetimes. The, the money part doesn't excite him. However, creating a tool which can potentially help hundreds of millions of people take charge of their own fate, help them build their own value, help them help others do the same with minimal risk, and in doing so, creating a network so strong because it is transparent, because it is more fair, because it is permissionless, because it is educational, because it is needed probably more than anything else, the need for such a transparent value system. Now, that excites this man, and that should really excite you too. You have the opportunity here to be part of this from the very start with Jack Lavin, with Fair Crypto Foundation, with the same community, no matter who you are, where you are, how old you are, whatever. Nothing is as powerful as Zen, whose time has come. And I really believe that the time has come. The time for Zen is now. And I can tell you that really excites me as well. You have no idea. Let me be honest here. I'm a human being, I'm financially incentivized here. I'm not gonna lie. Come launch day, I'm gonna have some wallets prepared. I'm gonna have some ETH for gas prepared in these wallets. I'm gonna connect with the protocol. I'm gonna claim my C rank. I'm gonna wait for the mint window. I'm gonna mint, I'm gonna stake. I'm gonna get that sweet APY, sure. But that's gonna take me five minutes in total. The rest of the time, I'm gonna help you do the same. And I'm gonna help you help others do the same. And we're gonna find people whose life really suck, 
whose life really could be changed with this value system and I'm going to help them make their life better and I'm going to feel good about it. Aligned incentives here, guys. This is, this is how we will do it. So enough about Jack. Let's talk about something more important. The Zen community. You know, Jack and Fair Crypto Foundation in all honor, Zen wouldn't really be anything without the Zen community. Again, Jack, Jack is great. He, he asks a lot of people. The way, the way he does stuff is, is truly remarkable. I really love it. He, he, he reaches out to a, a large amount of people. He listens patiently. He adopts the best ideas. He integrates them ASAP. He iterates fast. And from the very early beginning, we involve the community in the shape of this protocol to use the hive mind. And the sound community has had a remarkable growth in just the last couple of weeks since we started. We're more than 1,200 members right now in the Telegram group. Um, and day and night, people from all over the world have contributed to the making of SAM protocol. It's really been a community effort. The light paper has been iterated again and again and again all thanks to the amazing people in the Zen community. Sure, Jack initiated and came up with the base foundations, the base recipe here, but the people in the Zen community have turned and questioned every rock to make the protocol so much better than it could ever have been otherwise. Zen belongs with the community. It's been built by people for people. If you think that the first principles of crypto makes sense to you, if you think this is interesting, you are, no matter who you are, warmly welcome to the Zen community. Everyone is Zen, they just don't know it yet. You will find the warmest, friendliest people there who will gladly help you to learn, help you in your journey. There's always someone there who, within minutes, within seconds even, will answer your questions. To be honest, I'm really proud of the Zen community so far genuinely people wanting to do great things it's a beautiful tribe you can say it's more of a duocracy than anything else which is a concept i learned from all the maker spaces i've been involved in it's more of an open source hardware mentality like duocracy refers to the fact that the one who does decides we are shaping a culture collectively here and there's no team allocation, you know, Jack is sponsoring the core devs to make this happen for all of us initially, but there's no core team that's going to drive adoption. It's bigger than that. For a project like this, if you have an idea, you test it out in a community, you iterate and you feel the level of consensus and soundness. And if your idea, and then you just go ahead and do it, whatever will foster an adoption in, in your area in your life however sam protocol fits in within your life the collective power here is is huge we already have people from nepal from new zealand from wherever and we hear them saying hey i can use sam for for this purpose in my local community it's great and they're sharing their stories it's, it's, um, it's really amazing. So the main point I want to make here is that the community is key here because we have the opportunity to mobilize a force for good in a trustless way. So this means we don't have to know each other or base our belief in trust in person. We can trust the system and the values it's built with. So get your hands dirty, get in Telegram and start creating this with us right now. Here are the links to the Telegram channel. We set up a Discord recently and you can also follow updates on the official Sam Crypto account. Moving on, how to get Sam? This is the best part of it all. It's so easy. Remember, this is designed for mass adoption. For that to happen, we need to make it as simple as possible. 
So I'm going to explain all these steps one time, then I'm going to go through them one by one in more detail. If this sounds confusing, there's absolutely no need to worry. When the web interface is finished, you can actually do all of these steps. It will be very easy just to follow the steps in the application. So here's what you need to do. Number one, you need to prepare. You need to get a wallet and get some gas. Number two, you claim your so-called crypto rank, your C rank, with so-called proof of participation, and you to choose your time of delayed gratification, your mint term, T. Number three, you mint your Zen crypto at the chosen time. And number four, you have the possibility to also stake your Zen crypto. And remember, all of these steps are 100% completely free plus gas. So first step, you, you prepare by getting an address or a couple of addresses and, and you get some gas in them. We estimate that gas cost per transaction will be about three to 15 US dollars per transaction. Um, and any, any wallet on the Ethereum network will be compatible to interact with some protocol. So number two, claim your crypto rank, your C rank. What does this mean? Um, this is something that you can say sort of happens automatically by just you connecting to the network and, and you're pressing a button basically. And you're, you're in that way, you're getting your, your crypto rank. And at the same time, you will be prompted to also choose your mint term for your mint. So this can be chosen any time from zero to 100 days. Initially, um, and after a while, it will be more than 100 days, all the way up to 400, uh, around 400 with adoption. So note that the longer you wait, the more SEM you will be allowed to mint. So this is what we mean with delayed gratification. You can mint already from day one, but you're probably going to want to choose to mint a time closer to those 100 days. You can do whatever you want, but you'll be incentivized to choose longer so-called term limit because you will get more SEM tokens that way. The protocol remembers your C rank for you. You don't have to remember this. Step number three here, at the time that you've chosen in step two, you will now come back to the protocol and you will do the actual minting of your free plus gas SEM. And if you do this at the chosen time, congratulations, you now own SEM tokens. And you can stop there and just be happy or you can optimize your returns here and stake your SEM. So just to mention, if you don't come back to the protocol and claim your mint, the protocol will be very sad that you didn't come when you said you would and you will lose your uh, claiming rights. So you basically have 24 hours to, to claim them uh, at your chosen time without penalty, then penalty, then up to a week. Uh, you also have the uh, ability to claim them with uh, exponential penalty increase during this week. So mark your calendar. If you miss, there is nothing I or Jack or anyone else can do about it, even if we wanted to. There's no bro, come on. We literally can't. It's just you and the protocol here. Okay. So assuming you minted and everything's fine, now you have your SEM and now you have the possibility to also stake your SEM because if you'll do, you get a nice APY ranging from 20% down to 2% in perpetuity. So if you stake, let's say 100 SEM for 365 days, and you do so within the first 90 days from Genesis, the protocol will reward you 20% APY, meaning you will now have 120 Zen. So this is voluntary. You can also just sell your Zen 
uh, on a decentralized exchange and a liquidity pool, but the value goes, uh, the value is going to be close to zero in the beginning. So probably you might as well just stake them. There's no need to hodl, guys. Actually, when you when you stake, you burn your Zen, and then when you unstake, you get your Zen back plus APY. So if this was complicated. Um, this is the first time I'm explaining this uh, in this broad way to this broad group of people. Um, don't let it be too complicated. Um, just just have your wallet and, and some gas prepared and everything else will be very explanatory, I promise you. So guys, that's it. That's, that's all you have to do to participate. If you have any questions about this, you go to the community on Telegram or Discord and ask. There's 1200 sen seniors there right now ready to help you go through this process they don't want your money they don't want your email address they purely just want to help you go through this process so you can help others do the same in fact they are incentivized to do so the more that do this the better for everybody there's no competition just good vibes and community building here and again this whole process is completely free uh, apart from the gas you have to pay for the transactions. So by doing these simple steps, you will get free some tokens. Now, as we talked about, you will have to pay for gas fees. So every time you interact with the protocol, you need to pay a transaction fee when you claim, mint and stake. Actually, we, we, we are implementing a mint and stake function. So this can be done in, in one transaction, but that's that's also voluntary. So yeah, guys, that's how Zen works. That's how you can participate. That's how you can get uh, Zen. So when and where? Uh, we are hitting uh, deadlines here. Um, and, and it's been... Um, rolling pretty good since Genesis. Uh, right now, the protocol is being audited by Sokio. Um, it's only 400 lines of code. So we are fairly optimistic that we will be able to launch um, by the end of September after audit is complete. It's out of our hands, but we're fairly uh, positive that this is still the case. And this will be done through a web interface, uh, probably on faircrypto.org. It's not 100% decided yet, but it's probably gonna be from that site. And what you do is you follow updates in the Telegram, in the Discord, and on Twitter. So now, we're gonna go through how Sam actually works. We're gonna dive in straight to the protocol. We're gonna dive into the math behind it. So we're gonna do so by examining the formulas in the light paper. So you can go to faircrypto.org and download the latest version of the light paper. It's actually 1.5, which is the very latest. And I highly recommend that you read it. Um, it's not too long, it's just a few pages. Um, but yeah, I, I thought I, I'd go through the math in the protocol here, because I want you to understand what's going, what's going on. So let's do it. So, all right, guys, here we have the light paper in front of us, version 1.5, version 1.5. So we scroll through the text here, yada, 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 and here we enter Valhalla. So up here we have the minting formula the beautiful formula okay uh, and listen if 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 you get panic attacks from formulas in general i want you to pause the video go do some squats 
get some oxygen in your brain and then come back. It's really not that difficult as it looks like. I really want you to understand this uh, and I'm gonna break this down for you now, okay? So this is the minting formula, but we're actually gonna start by looking at this beautiful diagram down here. And we have some familiar terminologies here, uh, which we already covered, uh, but here we can actually see how it all connects uh, visually. So at the start here, we have Genesis. This is, this is when we launched the protocol, okay? This is gonna be uh, at the end of this month, at the end of September, if all goes well, right? So this is, this is when time starts for the protocol. We are, we are before, we are before Christ right now, okay? So this is, this is time zero of the protocol. Then uh, what happens here? Here is where you, for the first time, interact with the protocol. This is where you claim your rank, you know, just by connecting to the protocol and um, uh, pressing a button basically, the protocol will give you a uh, C rank. And when you do that in the same transaction, you remember that you're also gonna choose your time, your mint term. And this is gonna be uh, from zero up to 100 days that's going to be possible up to 5,000 addresses and then it's gonna uh, increase we're gonna talk about that later so let's let's say we choose 100 days here um, and after these 100 days you're gonna come uh, you're gonna come back to the protocol and you're gonna claim your mint and you have 24 hours to do so so what what actually happens here well you know, you, you're getting your C rank here, and it's a number between zero and um, theoretically infinity, uh, but, but let's say you get a C rank of a thousand. So what does that mean? That means that there are 999 people before you that have claimed their rank before you. So you're getting a, a C rank of 1000. And then while you wait and do some push-ups, you uh, and, and when you come back after this 100 days, there's going to be other addresses that are interacting with the protocol in between, right? So this is what we call at the time of the mint, um, the total amount of addresses that have interacted with the protocol since Genesis at the time of your mint here, that's what we call a global rank. So actually when you claim your rank uh, there, that is equal to the global rank at that point, but then it adds up, right? So the global rank here is gonna be um, bigger. And the difference between the global rank, the CRG and your rank is what we call the rank delta, okay? So this is the rank delta, this is the mint term, this is the, the time of between one zero and, and 100 days. Uh, it's gonna be from zero up to 400 days, we're gonna cover that later, but let's just uh, think for now in this example that you claimed your crypto rank, you've chosen your mint term and you're interacting with the protocol after 100 days, and then the global rank, that is the amount of people that has interacted with the protocol since Genesis, is gonna be a number that's bigger than, than your crypto rank, uh, right? Because many other addresses interacted after you, so the rank delta is your global rank uh, subtracted by uh, your crypto rank. That's the rank delta. And here we can see that we have something called uh, the reward amplifier. So you can have this in mind, but just to explain it, right? It, it's, it's a number that starts with 3000 and every 30 days, it's gonna decrease by 30, okay? So let's look at the formula now. Now, 
we're going to explain the same thing, but we're going to look at the formula and explain it. So basically your reward uh, is going to be the second logarithm of the global rank minus your rank. Okay, let's just focus on this part for now. Forget about all of this. So what does this mean? That means the, the global rank minus your rank, that is the rank delta here that we saw below, right? Um, and why do we make it logarithmic? Well, we make it logarithmic because this, this, makes, this makes the whole formula become inflationary initially and that is good because that is basically accelerating adoption but with time a logarithmic function like this um, pans out and that makes the rewards disinflationary with time you know a second logarithmic formula like this looks something like and don't pay attention to this, guys. But it looks like thing like this. This is also a logarithmic formula. So it's inflationary in the beginning, and then it becomes disinflationary with time. And th that's one thing to point out. Another thing to point out, which is very interesting here, is that as you can see here, your, your crypto rank um, is subtracted by the global rank. So what does this mean? Well, it means that your reward is going to be bigger if the global rank is bigger. So what does this mean? Stay with me here, guys. This means that the more addresses that interact with the protocol, after you actually claimed your crypto rank, the better it is for you. So you're actually incentivized to to have to spread a word about SEM and to as many people as possible because that means that the global rank is gonna be as big as possible, which means that the rank delta is going to be a higher number. If this number is if if your crypto rank is a thousand and what does that mean? That means that there have been 999 addresses interacted with the protocol before you, right? Okay, so after you claim your rank, there's 2,000 addresses that are interacting with the protocol after you. So that means that the global rank then is 1,000 plus 2,000. So it's 3,000. Okay, so that means we take... 3,000 minus 1,000, so that's 2,000. Now, if you talk to more people, and if we all talk to more people, that means that uh, maybe we have a rank delta, uh, we have a global crypto rank of 4,000 here. So that means there's 4,000 that's interacted with the protocol since Genesis, subtracted by a thousand so that means we have a global uh, uh, rank of 4,000 right and that means that the rank delta is 4,000 minus 1,000 so it's 3,000 so the point to make here is that this is what we mean when we say that we have viral tokenomics built in adoption is built into the formula uh, you're actually incentivized to everybody's incentivized to make this network spread so it's and it's logarithmic right so it's inflationary in the beginning and it becomes disinflationary with time as adoption moves on so this is basically the first most important part of the formula uh, but then we have t here and and what is t you already know what t is t is the mint term right so this means that the longer that you've chosen your time, um, the more send you will get. 
because the the bigger the t the longer the more days it's it's multiplied right so the more days you have it's uh, gonna generate you even more sum so this also means that the, the longer you are willing to delay your gratification of sen, the more sen you are going to get. And again, the, the, when you have a network of many people who are delaying this, um, the more robust the whole network uh, becomes. Everyone is incentivized to, to have the mean term as long as possible. Then we've added two other components of this formula. Uh, we call this the mean, the, the time dependent reward amplifier. Short, we call it the AMP. So, so what is the AMP? The AMP is, is something that's also going to incentivize faster adoption of the network. So the AMP is basically the maximum value of this part uh, and minimum one, right? So, so initially at Genesis, it's 3000 per day, as we can see um, in this diagram here. And then for every 30 days, it's going to be reduced by 30. Don't, don't be confused by, by all of this. Uh, it, it basically means that if you, if you put in the numbers here, then for every 30 days, it's going to be 3000 minus 30. So after one month, it's going to be, the amp is going to be 3,000 minus 30, so that's 2,970, right? After 60 days, it's going to be 30 times 2, so then it's going to be 3,000 minus 60, that's 3,940, and so on, all the way down to 1. So that's going to take roughly 8 years, a little more than 8 years, before the amplification effect uh, takes off. Um, right, so basically what it means is that you will be incentivized to, it creates sort of an urgency, right? You're going to tell your friends, hey, if you're interested in this, then you probably should interact with the protocol this month and not wait for next month because the AMP effect is going to be 30 more this month, the next month, all right. So again, this is something that incentivizes uh, adoption. Then we also have the last part of the formula, which is the early adopter amplification factor. <laughs> this is what happens when, when Jack gets to choose the, the terminology here. We love it, the EAA. So this is, this is exactly the same thing as the AMP, but the AMP is time dependent, right? So no matter how many people interact with the protocol, it doesn't really matter because it's based on time. It's just gonna be reduced on time. It, it's not gonna, the AMP doesn't care about how many people interact with the protocol, whereas, whereas the early adopter amplification factor does, okay? So as we can see here in this formula, uh, it's going to uh, decrease, um, it's, it's gonna start from 10% and then decrease by 0.1% per each 100,000 increase in global rank, okay? so. Put it another way, for each 100,000 addresses that interacts with the protocol, um, this early adopter amplification factor is going to be reduced by 
0.1%. Okay, so if that's confusing, just think about this way. Um, you, you're going to get a bigger reward for your mint uh, the earlier you are, and rightfully so, because you're earlier to help build the network and you need an incentive to do so. So this is an incentive, this is an incentive to make the time dependent as long as possible is an incentive for you and to spread the word and increase the global rank it's an incentive for you and everybody to to increase it so that's basically it guys this is the foundation of the formula and if this was complicated for you it's because this is something you need to hear a couple of times maybe you should rewind the video and listen to it again and maybe you should have uh, someone else explaining it better than I can. Uh, please give me feedback on this and I'll try to explain it in a better way. But this is basically how it works. And, and I personally think it's, it's a very beautiful, it's a very beautiful formula. Um, and it's very easy to, to understand once, once you look at it a few times, um, really have all of these factors which are uh, helping and incentivizing the whole network to to spread here. So, um, what else? Um, let's let's continue. Um, let's talk about term limits. Let's talk about term limits. So, what is term limits? Um, we talked about it here, right? This is the mint term. So now we're going to focus in on this part, the mint term here, here. You know, I told you that initially uh, you can choose the mint term between zero and 100 days, right? Up to 5,000 addresses. And here, here's actually the math, how it looks like. So if we look at this, it means that the so-called free mint term limit Okay, it's a very complicated word, but it actually means the amount of days you're allowed to choose uh, your mean term, it's going to be initially 100, up to 5,000 interacting global addresses, you know, so that's the global rank right here. Then after 5,000 addresses have interacted with the protocol, uh, it's going to follow this formula instead. So it's going to be 100 plus the second logarithm of the global rank times 15. Okay, so if you plot this out in a diagram, it actually looks like this, right? It's a disinflationary curve. So here you can see after uh, 5,000 addresses, it's going to be 100 days and what we can also see just reading this plot is around here where 1 million addresses have interacted with the protocol, the free mint term uh, limit is going to be roughly 400 days. So they're interesting. So that's basically it, guys. Let me know if there's any questions on that. Uh, let's talk about what else do we have here? We have penalties. Penalties. You remember that we talked about up here that if you have, uh, when you claim your rank, you also choose your mint term, right? So you choose your mint term and for example, being we choose this to be uh, 100 days, which is the maximum, right? So that means that we have uh, 24 hours to, to claim our SEM uh, without getting a penalty. Uh, but there's still a chance for you to get your SEM. There, it's up to seven days for you to, uh, to get SEM. And after day seven, the penalty is going to be 100%, no matter how many days the participation was. So you can also see that this is an um, um, uh, exponential increase in penalty uh, after days. And the reason for this progression is to avoid bad actors to that uh, create ladders uh, of uh, invisible claims, basically. So 
what we're gonna do is and, and this is like what why do you have this like what why couldn't i be able to be flexible in that mean term uh, this is part of the proof of participation like you this is part of the so-called uh, proof of work you have to put in, if you like, to interact with this protocol to get your SEM. Uh, this is part of your obligation in order to get your SEM, uh, in order to make the system work. Um, so yeah, guys, uh, let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, I, th I think it's pretty clear. Um, let me know. We might need to cover this later as well. And now we have uh, this next part, which is about staking some. So you have your freshly, freshly from the press minted sum. And now it's this optional part where you can stake and you're incentivized to do so. And you can then stake your sum with a uh, period that's limited to the following range between one and a thousand days. So here we can see in this table that if you stake your SEM within uh, zero to 90 days from Genesis, you will get 20% APY. So that means that Let's say I stake, um, we have an example here. Let's say I stake 100,000 SEM for 365 days, okay, within the first 90 days since Genesis, then you'll be able to stake 120,000 SEM, right? So 100,000 plus 20% of 100,000 is 120,000 in total. And this is the formula for that. So your reward is the amount of staked SEM that you stake times the APY uh, times uh, the time. So the, the um, uh, time says Genesis. So basically um, this, this formula explains it, right? So the APY here is the max out of 20, which is the start APY, minus the days since Genesis divided by 90, and it's the maximum of this out of two. So after 1,620 days from Genesis of the protocol, the staking reward is going to be 2% in perpetuity. You know, it's not, it's not sustainable to maintain 20% APY uh, indefinitely so it's uh, again it's a it's another incentive for people to stake with the protocol with these uh, staking rewards uh, built in yeah guys so that's basically the math it's not more complicated than that this is probably complicated enough if, if you're not used to crypto and if you're not used to math but this is the full picture this is how you can make something very beautiful. Um, and yeah, that's it. That's it. That's all I have to say. Isn't it amazing? Let me know, guys, if, if uh, this was complicated or if um, this was clearly enough. Uh, we're happy to help you understand it. And again, you don't have to understand all of this mambo jumbo. Okay. This is how it works. This is for those who's really interested in understanding the, the math behind it. But you don't really have to understand how this works if you're not interested. All you have to do is connect with the protocol, with your wallet, get your C rank, choose your time. Okay, it's two clicks of the button here. And then come back with the time and then get your SEM. Okay, and then stake it. That's it. So it's pretty easy. All right, guys, time to go back to school. Um, now we've come to the section of the entertainment where we're going to talk about a use case. When you skip 
the whole centralized exchange route in order for you as a new adopter to enter uh, the crypto world. When you, when you skip that whole route, more doors for adoption opens up that we didn't even consider before. You know, it's pretty insane that a, that a newcomer who wants to learn about crypto needs to go through that centralization route, risk their own money, despite knowing nothing at all, right? So when you also remove all unnecessary obstacles for learning, like having to provide value ahead of play, even more doors open up. Imagine instead just getting a wallet, enter a website, and start the process of mining value right away. And while waiting for your sweet free plus gas sum, you get educated in first principles crypto right away from the very start. Just imagine all the schools, for example. Now, what is the value of having all students mine SEM for free to play around with and learn about cryptocurrency and blockchain? The opportunity then is that it will also shape the next generation crypto adopters learning the sound principles rather than becoming short-sighted influencer experts traders and getting wrecked while actually building their wealth at the same time and we will all benefit from each other's success so imagine this you have one class you have 30 kids and you break it down into five different lectures, as I'm illustrating here, right? So lecture number one, you go through with the kids, hey, this is how you create a wallet, right? It, it's pretty intuitive, like you, you, you tell them, we're, we're gonna create something of value here. Uh, the first thing to do is get a bucket where you can store this value, right? So you, you go through, that whole thing and and having them get a wallet each election number two uh, you fill this up with some transactional value right so so you help them to to get some gas uh, in their wallets and, and you help them to to uh, to see the infrastructure of let's say ether scan where they can um, see everything that goes on in a blockchain. You integrate that somehow. I don't know. Lecture number three, you then you then have your wallet, right? You have some gas. So then you go to faircrypto.org and then or any other site. You know, it's a protocol. You can create your own interface here. Uh, whatever. You then connect to the protocol and you choose your mint term and you basically start explaining the concepts of delayed gratification you know that that you, you're planting a seed here um, for something to come uh, you're, you're creating something and, and the value of having them do that individually is huge right it's like they're, they're really feeling the the uh, um, the interacting with a protocol here you know this 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 should be gamified this whole experience by the way Lecture number four, you go back uh, to the protocol and you mint. Uh, so you go through that whole process of value creation, you know, something they planted before, now they can go in and harvest that process at this time in this bucket, in this wallet that you created in lecture one with the gas that you did in lecture two. And then in lecture five, you say, okay, now you have some value. Um, what do we want to do with this? Well, we can either spend it on bubblegum or we can invest it. You know, we can, we can further help grow this little plant we have now from this original seed. Um, we can make it into a big tree. So, you know, you, you, you do all of these steps 
and you make it super simple and story-like with analogies, just like, you know, staking is like planting a seed. The longer you wait, the bigger the plant and so on and so forth. You know, basically, if, if you take this example, you know, you have 30 kids in a class, um, assuming it would cost $3 per transaction, uh, you would have three transactions per student, you know, claim your rank means stake. Uh, you would have 30 students. So it's three times three times 30. That's $270 in transaction fees for 30 kids. You know, like wh what is the, what is the value here? We, we can quantify the value. Would $270 for 30 kids be worth it? Think about it. You just thought 30 kids sell sovereignty by action. How a wallet work, how transactions work, how to interact with the protocol, how to delay gratification, have something to look forward to, you know, planting a seed, creating something. If you're a teacher out there listening to this, you should be really excited right now. You, you have the opportunity to become hero in these kids' life. Isn't this what school was supposed to be about? Prepare kids for the future. And what better way to do that than to teach them value creation, value storage by action. Listen, if, if we can teach kids this stuff, what do you think it's gonna do for adoption? If you can teach a 10 year old about crypto, you can teach anyone. That's adoption mindset. Remove the whole investing thing right away. Take, just remove it. It's difficult. And in fact, it's not necessary. You know, if you want to build something, what do you do? If you want to build a car, if you want to build a house, whatever, where do you start? You start when you're two years old and you play with Lego. So if you're a kid, I tell you, hey, here's a wallet, here's some crypto, play with it, learn, test, interact with the protocol, have fun. Don't risk your day job, son. Give them the Lego to play with and have fun and learn. So if we're serious about wanting crypto adoption, we have to give the kids the tools. If you're a teacher, do this right now. If you know a teacher, send them this right now. Tell them there's an opportunity of being a hero here. You know, document each step, make a five minute video, send that video to every teacher in the world. World domination, happy sovereign kids. You know, we all we all had this different experience from teacher. You know, you had. You had these teachers who really taught you this profound stuff that you're so grateful for today, that really helped you, teaching you some stuff that, that made you better prepared for the world. And then you also had this, these teachers who had 500 words per PowerPoint slide, which you still despise to this day. So choose which kind of teacher you want to be. But this is just like, this is an opportunity for you to be hero. And if you make this video, Jack will show it to hundreds of thousands of people. I'm sure he will. This, this, this whole use case was actually inspired by one amazing guy in the same community. I think it was from New Zealand and, and he, he had some indigenous kids and he, he came to us and said, Hey, I've been looking for something like this. This, this is great. This is exactly what I've been looking for. I really hope he will do it. He was a great guy. The thing is, guys, when we remove unnecessary barriers to learn, a whole new world opens up. And that's just one use case. So I want you to think about what other use cases can you think of when we now have a token that is free to mint? Let me know, let me share, share those ideas with, with, uh, with us, with the rest of the community, and uh, then just let's do it, let's have fun with it. By the way, we could also do the same with Bitcoin, but we just have to buy half of Iceland first and become trillionaires. Um, anyway, let's move on.
So now we're going to talk about why Zen matters. You know, Zen is the first protocol ever created that is designed for mass adoption and lives up to the first principles of crypto. Zen really tries to solve problems. You know, unfairness is a problem. Centralization is a problem. Adoption is a problem. Custody is a problem. Lack of transparency is a problem. So we ultimately do this because we want to solve these problems. And many systems fail and create distortions based on bad system design. Decentralization, unfairness, transparency and custody are just some of the parameters that can greatly influence the longevity of a project. So if, you, if it's done right, it's less points of failure and max adoption becomes a possibility. We need to create strong incentives by offering a platform with the lowest possible barriers for everyone. Anyone from an early miner today all the way to the young student in the future to optimize their own wealth in a self-sovereign way. So by you figuring out how to optimize your wealth and your families, which is fine since there's low risk, right? They don't have to buy in, they don't have to sacrifice, they don't have to sacrifice an existing value to participate. You're at the same time contributing to the network effect, which is great for everyone. So it's aligned incentives here. But instead of you just jumping in, uh, sorry, if you're just dumping it, you're actually incentivized to hold for long, delayed gratification. So what does that mean? That means we now have a network of people who in a trustless manner shows long-term support for the network. I mean, it's great. Also, we will all be incentivized to teach all newcomers about self-custody. It's better for everyone. And it's better for everyone because I'd rather have you have Sam than not. If you have Sam, you will become more incentivized to hold and delay gratification than sell it, right? You'll be more incentivized to tell others and grow the network. So I'd rather teach you how to protect your wealth than to have you lose your keys. So you will also feel good about sharing wealth creation. You'll be selling life. The low barrier to entry here is key for, for some, but more so for crypto adoption. You know, we, we as an industry, we wanted adoption. So we told people to sign up with centralized services like Celsius, Voyager, because it was easy and convenient. And in doing so, we thought we did everyone a favor, but the reverse was true. Since they were system up based on first principles, built with trust in persons who lied to their customers and convincing you to give up custody, of course, they eventually failed and so hard setting back adoption years, discouraging your dear loved ones of hope and fortune. No bueno, okay? So what did we learn? we learned that we got to make the barrier to entry as low as possible. So it's more convenient than centralized services. Now they can enter crypto without even having to number one, explain to their legacy bank why they want to have more control in their life uh, by controlling their own value. Number two, go through the shady centralized exchanges and number three, risk their own money without knowing anything about crypto at least until they start learning and they can take educated decisions. You know, apart from gas fees, maybe you can send them if you, if they clear your room or, or, <laughs> or buy you a coffee or something, you know. Crypto is like a stormy ocean. It's scary, it's volatile, it's dangerous if you don't know how to sail. But if you do know how to sail, however, you're, encourage, you're encouraging wind to get you from A to B. And this is where Sand Protocol really comes in. Sand Protocol is the robust boat that will let the complete noob sail in the very stormy ocean in a safe way, all the way until he encourages the wind and surf on the waves. 
Send protocol with its unforked, completely novel code rests, however, on the shoulders of giants by adopting what has worked very well on other protocols, but at the same time eliminating the points of failures that made the other protocols and services fail. Sen is doing this by adopting first principles. There are no VCs optimized for their own ROI, dumping on your ass as soon as they get a chance. There's no centralization making the whole network deal with unnecessary uncertainty of their value, which can be jeopardized with the whims of the few. No dark stone getting monopoly on yet another industry, massaging the back of Brian Armstrong. You know, wh what do you think? This guy wants the best for the industry. He's running a business. If made a choice over what's best for Coinbase or people of the world, he's going to make compromises. That's how it works. It's nothing to be emotional about, but you have to realize that's what will happen. No 50% team and founder allocation pretending to be decentralized while controlling the whole network. No Machinsky sitting there saying, trust me, our balance sheet is strong, your funds are safe, we're insured, customer first, stare right into your face while taking your keys to your hard earned money and gambling it away. Banks are not your friends, well no shit Sherlock, we already knew that. Well guess what, you're not either. That was your hard-earned money that's now gone because some guy chose not to be transparent, fooling everyone to believe that adoption requires giving up custody. How many years did that alone set back crypto adoption? No Kevin O'Leary encouraging to arrest our fellow developers just because it fits his institutional adoption narrative. Sure. Bring in institution, but at what cost? We want adoption, but maybe, just maybe, there are other ways of achieving such without making a whole industry fall into the hands of big mighty institutions. Again. Centralization yet again. And personally, I don't care about regulation. Regulation needs to serve the people, not the other way around. They're going to tell you and me that it's okay to transact with this, but not that based on some fraudulent framework they invented in Wall Street, Washington, or even worse, some global entity for the greater good. Hell no. No more pump and dump schemes manipulated by whales. Really? That's the best we can do for adoption. Finally, making new systems and build something new, better than the legacy system. You tell all your friends who know nothing about the very basics of investing, they invest their hard earned money on the newest influencer hyped coin just to get wrecked shortly after by manipulation or VC on like exit. You think that's a good intro into crypto? Why not make it easy for them to learn? Instead of expecting instant profit, introduce them to the beauty and longevity of thinking long term, delayed gratification. If you think long term, you always win. Have you thought about it? You obviously win in the long run because you're taking sound decisions today with the intent for tomorrow. You're planting a seed today that you can harvest tomorrow. But you also win today because you feel good about the good that's about to come. No more Gary Gangster standing there fooling you to thinking you can just save your hard earned money to retirement, really? I'm getting less than 0.1% APY on my deposits while inflation closes in on 10%. And this guy used to work for Goldman. Maybe because someone printed 40% of all dollars and existed today in the last couple of years, maybe that had an effect on inflation. It's just a theory. You know, Yell and Jay Pow chanting transitory all the way while you again now have to pay the bill and they just get away with it. Didn't we learn anything from 2008? How many, how much more are we going to let them destroy value before we wake up? j Powell said just the other day, we don't want to stand in the way of appropriate innovation, <laughs> including digital innovation. But we think that something that is considered money need to be appropriately regulated. 
And you know, if, even though that might sound reasonable, the problem is, are you gonna be the one, Mr. J-Man, to decide what is appropriate? No. We basically have to code faster than they can regulate, guys. Guys, the whole system is fraudulent from the roots, but we can do something about it. So what can you do to change the world? You can do one of three things, or all of them. You can regulate, you can communicate, or you can build it in. Let's take an example. Let's take the seatbelt of a car. How do you incentivize people to use a seatbelt? You can legislate. You can say there's a fine if you don't wear it. You can communicate. You can have a billboard saying, this is how many people die in car accidents and 90% of them didn't have a seatbelt. And in doing so, you incentivize someone to use a seatbelt. Or you can build it in. There's this annoying sound that won't shut up until you put the seatbelt on. Personally, I am a builder. I like to create stuff. I love Lego as a kid. So when I hear Pao saying stuff like that, I'm thinking, okay, let, let's just build something here first so you can corrupt it. I don't know. Maybe I should trust the Fed more, but it's, it's just so hard, you know, based on their track record and their lack of transparency. It's, it's impossible. So we can all do something, guys. If you're not happy, choose your battleground. Build community, build, communicate, or legislate. Don't feel bad, just go out and fight. Do your part, and it all adds up. But I'm not done. No more governments freezing your bank accounts because you don't follow the party line. As if fiat currency weren't badly designed enough. They're about to get even worse. With CBDCs, the government will not only be able to follow your each and every transaction, they will be able to create new crises, make up even worse solutions and decide who gets paid what when. And if you don't comply, they will be able to reach straight into your bank account and withdraw non-complacent fees. No thank you. We will create our own reserve currency. We learned about self-custody from centuries of malpractice. Most recently within the crypto with, with Celsius and Voyager and, and outside crypto, for instance, you had the Canadian government freezing bank accounts if you only so much donated $25 to a protest. You have Chinese banks freezing accounts and redefining your deposits. The same pattern, it's the same problem with the same solution, custody. Who should control your money, you or someone else? Listen, you don't have to agree with me in all of this. You know, Socrates said regarding solving a dispute, I think it was, let, let's first sit down and go through all the things we do agree on, and then we can see what we don't agree on. So SEM protocol is basically highly condensed consensus of first principles, which is based on just math. It's just math. People are going to call us religious at some point because they always do, but it's it's verifiable religion then. You know, if you mean Sen, you're basically adopting the narrative of, yeah, this level of transparency and principle makes sense. When you mean Sen, you mean first principles. You know, may maybe you're just here for the mad gains and that's fine. You build your wealth and you, you help other build theirs. The, the governments of this world is sure as hell ain't gonna help you become a sovereign individual. So who can blame you? But then why don't you build philanthropy into the heart of the model? The system will la let you make a living for yourself, but at the same time benefit everyone else. Doesn't that make sense? You build and grow your wealth and help others build their wealth and sovereignty. And instead of building for yourself first and thinking about giving back later post Ferrari, do both right away. You find a system that benefits you and others simultaneously. Sen is a good example of that kind of system. They want your money, they want control, they want power. They may censor us, they may regulate us, they may even lock us in but they will never make us stop innovate. You can't stop innovation, you can only prolong it. 
listen, maybe just maybe we cracked the code here. We figured it out. Maybe Zen is a system that will benefit millions of people all over the world, no matter where you live, where you come from, or your circumstance. But also maybe along this path, we would fail because of a system error, but it's okay. We will just continue to innovate and educate. First principles again and again. So why do all this? It's not because we can, but it's because it's needed, it's necessary. Zen is basically a game of delayed gratification. It's a fair launch. No initial supply, thus not benefiting the founders or the VCs. It's free mint. And there's always a way for the new guy to make something since you get more depending on the longer you wait. I can mint, but then I lose my C rank and I have to start over. So I'm just going to benefit more than you who come after me until I actually mint. And why wouldn't I? I was earlier to help build the network. So you have all these mechanics, but the real value is the network, the community being built. And the entry barriers are the lowest possible, which is needed for adoption. Guys, community is key here because, as we talked about, we can mobilize a force for good in a trustless way. So this means we don't have to know each other or base our belief in trust in a person or an institution. We can trust the system through verification and the value it is built with. So yeah, for these reasons and many more, Sam protocol really matters. Sam tries to solve problems. Unfairness is a problem. Centralization is a problem. Adoption is a problem. Custody is a problem. Transparency is a problem. Welcome to Sam Protocol. We need you. So this is the outro. Um, and thank you for following me this whole path, guys. Um, it's been an amazing journey together with you. We have covered what Sam Protocol is and why it's unique. We've talked about who's behind Sam. We've exposed the super shadowy coders. We went through how you can participate, how you can mint. Um, we also uh, disclosed when and where you can do so up to the point where we know that uh, today. Um, we've gone through the light paper. We talked about how Zen works. We broke down the formulas into quarks. So you know exactly now how every little thing works. But again, seeing this for the first time you're probably more confused than ever you need to see this again and again and again you need to have it explained by other people you should really listen to jack and again you don't really need to understand the whole mechanics about it you can just participate uh, by getting a wallet and some gas and press some buttons we went through a use case to get some perspective to, to understand how SAM protocol really can be used and really make a change in people's lives and how, how significant effect um, SAM protocol can have for, for adoption. And then we talked a little bit about where, why SAM matters just to, get, just to get a little perspective of the why we're doing all of this and why it's so important that this is not only about mad gains guys this is something that's really needed and if you have something that's needed then there's also room for it to to grow and become big if you think this is interesting please 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 go into the telegram group you have 1200 ninjas seniors there right now who are just waiting to help you with whatever question you have we have a discord set up you have a Twitter where you can follow. Um, also follow Mr. Jack Levin, the Mr. Google guy. And uh, you can also go to his link tree and see uh, other stuff he's uh, worked with. So, okay guys, thanks so much for listening. And goodbye. I hope you realize by this point that sound makes sense. Okay, goodbye.